Um, I was just asking you off camera whether there's been a bigger story uh, that you've covered, Shannon. It's hard to imagine there's much bigger. You've just got a new piece out uh, online that talks about how Sony bungled this thing from start to finish. Talk about the, do the anatomy right at this moment of how Sony has screwed this up. Well, actually, uh, there's both within Hollywood and outside Hollywood, they're, they're just the brunt of the most brutal criticism right now. Um, I, it's not just an analysis I'm making, it's just a pure observation. They've gone from championing the rights of these of Seth Rogen and James Franco to make a controversial movie to um, essentially putting at risk, you know, the whole kit and caboodle of Sony Pictures by uh, you know, apparently not taking seriously the threats that had been, uh, that you know, sort of the ominous, the dark clouds on the horizon. They were getting emails and warnings from North Korea through the months of making this movie. And then the question is, whose judgment call was it to um, go pr pursue the movie as planned? There's a lot of changes that might have been made along the way. So then there's this question of how they reacted once they were hacked, which of course is a devastating thing and presumably, presumably nobody could have imagined something as paralyzing as what actually occurred. I don't think there's been a hack in corporate history at, of this level, of this order of magnitude, stealing the information, leaking people's private uh, uh, employees' information, leaking private emails to that degree. But then, um, you know, you, they are also being criticized within Hollywood by other studios for taking too long to make right. the decision about the movie, endangering the, the very important Christmas movie going. Uh, experience and you know of course their movie plays alongside everybody else's movies and now they're also being criticized for having caved to the hackers and having pulled the movie but uh, you know too late for some people's tastes and and then for not putting the movie out in some way handing the hackers a full victory if you like is so there, they're just getting slammed from every angle here right. sure is there anybody in Hollywood that's defending Sony or is it pretty much just open season on them for every direction Today, I wouldn't say they have any defenders that I can see, right? The latest thing I saw is Michael Linton is having to explain his emails. I mean, who would really withstand the scrutiny of having their every email pulled out of context and thrown into the public square? Even those uh, people who are maybe not as casual in their, resp in their emails as some of the, the things have, uh, that have leaked out or have been deliberately leaked have shown, you know, there's a lot of damage and hurt feelings that could be construed in a lot of ways. I've had my leaked emails out there at, at some point by people who didn't like something that I said and it's completely taken out of context. It, it, it's not fair, but that's where we're at. Sharon, I, I, you, you, in your first answer, you said that what was at risk here was maybe the whole kit and caboodle for Sony. So uh, it was for at least for Sony Pictures. Explain what that means. What's the what is actually at stake here? Not just for the leaders, not just for Michael Lind and Amy Pascal, but for everybody involved. What what actually is on the line here, both in terms of the movie financially, what what the loss is going to be, but more broadly in terms of this studio standing in Hollywood. Yeah, that's really the question on the table right now. Well, let's start with the film itself. The movie itself, we uh, published a story. You guys had a good story also uh, looking at the loss from this. The movie itself uh, is about a $90 million loss right down, right? That's the cost of the production, the cost of the marketing. Um, there are other losses that are estimated at having to rebuild the security infrastructure and the digital infrastructure, the piracy of the five movies that were uh, fully leaked online. Uh, so there, there's other more tens of millions of dollars in that. That's certainly something that the studio could withstand. And I think there's also um, potentially a valid insurance claim that they could make against the cost of the movies. They might be able to recoup that through that means. But what you're really asking is, what is the future of Sony Pictures yep. as a business? And that really um, is something that we all have to think about. I mean, first of all, there aren't very many major studios left, you know, six. Uh, and they're members of the Motion Picture Association who make all the, the entertainment, the, the, the lion's share of the entertainment that we consume around the world today. Um, <clears throat> I would say that 
the current leadership is highly at risk to no longer be the current leadership right. at the studio. That's for sure. With new leadership at the studio, they would have, they, they will have a great deal of fence mending to do in the talent community. Um, I think that it's going to be, there's going to have to be a lot of assurances made that conversations that are had are kept private, um, that deals that are made um, are going to be honored. That, um, you know, so of course, the, the, the thing is when you're making, when you're a studio, what you're trying to do is get the best material first. You're trying to build franchises. You're trying to create relationships with the movie stars and the writers and directors who make the great movies. And you're competing with the other studios to do that. So there is significant damage to Sony's reputation yep. as a place where you mm -hmm. can do that. Um, but the, and they'll have to rebuild right. over time. Sheila, let me ask you one last question. You've got about 30 seconds here. Well, th there have been a number of people, including people in Washington, who have suggested that Sony should be putting this movie online or uh, in, in, in pay-per-view. They've rejected that. Why? Yes. Quickly, I would just say they need to get this problem behind them. And I think that they, they thought that if they allowed any outlet for this movie to be seen, they were still at risk by, uh, by whoever's out there making this threat. North Korea. And so they, I just think that uh, Michael Linton and Amy Pascal needed to get over with this, get this over and move on. And the best way to do that was just to not release the movie at all.